All right, so we're going to be talking about uh, Objective-C, we're going to talk about Java, and we're going to talk about all the wonderful things of native development. Wrong, got you guys. We're going to talk about Ionic, um, and we're going to talk about hybrid apps, Angular, all things mobile. It'll be fun. You guys will have a good hour. So, a little bit about myself. I'm Mike Hardington, um, developer advocate for Ionic. Uh, so, I'm M Hardington on Twitter and GitHub. Find me, tweet at me, follow me one day, unfollow me the next day, watch me crumble. <coughs> I'm from Rhode Island, so if you guys are ever, you know, Rhode Island's not too far from here. If you guys are ever in the area, this is the kind of scenery that you'll see all the time. So let's just get right into it. Uh, we're all developers. We're all given products to actually make. And all those, all those uh, products that we have to make actually come with challenges, um, especially if you're going to do it natively. Um, by native, I mean if you're going to work with um, Objective-C or Java or even C-sharp for Windows Phone. Each platform that you want us to actually support, there's a lot of code in each one of those platforms. So simplest way to, you know, keep a code base nice and small, which is what everyone wants. Support, we just want one code base. We don't want three. Um, and if you're a developer who only knows iOS development and you, you and your friend are doing a small startup, and this is for the enterprise, but we gotta think of it from the smallest possible uh, perspective. If it's just me and Kent and we only know um, iOS development, well, we gotta hire a guy who knows how to do Java. Um, it's gonna be expensive. Developers are kinda high in demand, so you gotta pay them well. Um, and at the end of the day, what are you actually gonna get out of this um, in terms of actually maintaining uh, maintainable code and just profit? Because money is what it's all about. <clears throat> so, more platforms that you have, more uh, problems that you're gonna have. And we could simply solve this problem if we just go down to one platform. But there's all those markets that we just missed. Android is dominating right now. So much so that I broke down and actually bought an Android phone. I would have never done that a year ago. <clears throat> so are there any alternatives? Um, there's a bunch of them out there. We're gonna focus on one today called uh, Apache Cordova. Show of hands. Who's heard of Cordova? So you guys are my people. Uh, so yeah, you guys all know what it is. It's hybrid, um, hybrid development, so you take an HTML5 web app, uh, wrap it inside of native layer, deploy it to your device. Uh, you have direct access to native APIs uh, through a JavaScript, um, JavaScript plugin system. Really sophisticated stuff, so you can actually go ahead uh, and with JavaScript connect to a Bluetooth device Really great stuff, and you're all, and at the end of the day, you're just using one code base, and it's all web technologies. It's fun, we all know it. You know, so we can't chase that right once, run anywhere. And it turns out with Cordova, yeah, you can. It's, and it's pretty fun too. But Cordova also, also comes with some things that, you know, they just don't tell you straight up. Um, so there's no UI. Uh, something that's great about native development is that you don't have to worry about providing your own uh, navigation bar or tabs or any of these like super complex structures. That's all provided for, uh, for you by the SDK. Cordova doesn't have actually an SDK, so you have to make your own. Not a bad thing, but that's something else that you actually have to focus on besides building your app. Uh, there's no JavaScript framework, which, again, not necessarily a bad thing, but what's great about frameworks is that they actually can steer you towards a good path. Um, so that way, when it's a team of people, well, they can all you know, rely, know that they're all writing code for the same thing, and it's gonna follow uh, kind of a, a system. And there's also no support for gestures, uh, super complex navigation stacks, multiple nested 
um, histories, uh, no actual transition between views. So this is all stuff that you have to recreate. Uh, something like iOS, I could open up Xcode if I really want to, choose a simple starter, and I'm gonna get all that out of the box. So I'm gonna pause on that part, and we're gonna take a quick look at Angular. Um, I'm gonna preface it by saying all of what I'm going to show is going to change. Uh, if you were at Kent's, uh, Kent C. Dodd's talk earlier this morning, he went over a lot of Angular 2, and what I'm gonna show you is Angular 1. Um, we have to use it now because there is no official Angular 2, so it'll be relevant for a year, hopefully. So we'll look at Angular, and what is Angular? Uh, so it's a JavaScript framework for creating MVC style applications. Um, MVC, MVVM, MV whatever, that's how they like to address themselves. Um, so what it really is, is you know, bringing these concepts up, you know, we have some data that we want to display, and we have some uh, code that we want to interact with that data. We get these uh, things out of the box, like two-way data bindings, so that way if you set a um, value on your model, you display it through your view, and if it changes anywhere, it's just gonna update. And because it's programming, we'll look at hello world. So I have a little text input right here, and hello world, or if I really wanted to be cheeky, hello Philly. So close that for now, go back here. So we'll quickly go over some of this because it's not really the point. Um, so if we want to pull in some data, we're going to most likely be pulling in some JSON. Uh, we'll go out, we'll make a, uh, we'll create something called a factory, which essentially just allows us to go out um, and create some global uh, functions that we can have access everywhere inside of our Angular app. So we'll go out, we'll create a, a factory called speakers, and in that factory we're actually going to return function get speakers. And all that's going to do is just make a quick HTTP request to some site, get some data that's hopefully in JSON, and not PHP, <laughs> and then we're gonna actually be able to take the data and use it in our controller. So we have this controller down here where we're gonna set the thing called, we're gonna use this thing called scope, which is essentially a way of thinking if you were, uh, if you were following ES6, it's essentially the same concept as let, so these are just variables that are scoped to a function. So we can say we're gonna have an empty array of speakers, and then we're gonna call that uh, get speakers function from this factory. Um, if it's successful, we're gonna take the data from that request, and we're just gonna set that to the speakers array. Pretty simple, you know, 10, can't be more than 10 lines of code, of code. and I'm already getting data from the web, pulling it down. Well, now I wanna display it, so we'll take a look at views, and all a view really is, if you've done any kind of a MVC program before, it's, you know what it is, but for Angular, it's essentially just an HTML file. So we can actually go ahead and attach that controller that we just created to this div, um, and it'll only be able to, and we can interact with it any way we want within that uh, element. So there's not gonna be any uh, logic over here, it's just gonna be you know, the visual data that we wanna represent. But you're gonna notice there's some stuff that it's not really part of the HTML spec, uh, such as ng controller, which I just mentioned, ng repeat, uh, these weird curly braces. <clears throat> and again, if you're familiar with stuff uh, like handlebars, um, it's the same concept. We're gonna take, uh, we're gonna loop over some stuff in that speakers array uh, with the ng repeat, and it's gonna be every object in the array, we're just gonna start binding things to the keys in uh, each of those objects. So if we were to go over here uh, and look at speaker.firstName, well, speaker.firstName, if it was me, it was gonna be Mike, 
if the last name is going to be my last name, and then my bio is just going to be whatever I provided about myself. So really quickly, and it'll repeat this element for every single speaker. So we're not going to copy, paste, copy, paste. 300 items, we can do it, no problem. Uh, states, go over really quickly. So our states are essentially a way of rethinking single uh, HTML pages. So we can just create one index.html and then load all of our other pages or states or views um, inside that index. And then we can set up things like what's the URL going to be, what's a, the template, what's the actual code or markup going to look like for that. If we want to assign a controller to it, we can do it here. If they try to go ahead and go to a page that we haven't really created, we can set up some kind of redirect saying we'll just send them back to the beginning. They messed up somewhere. And then we get this powerful, annoying, but at the end of the day, really great uh, thing called directives. So directives are a little, little complicated with Angular. Um, so this is like a nice example to look at and kind of understand what are some of the concepts that a directive has. So we have, we're going to create this thing down at the bottom called the blank tag from web 1.0, because I like it. We want it, and it's going to return some stuff. So we wanted to restrict it to being just an element, and then we want to start giving it some functionality. So we can use this link function right here and actually set up a show element function and then a hide element function, which is just going to, what their name, like their name suggests, show and hide uh, the element and then call the next one. So we get this nice kind of uh, loop of showing, hiding every second. And that's how you would use it down there at the bottom. So people using, people who write directives, they have to go through the hell that is the directive uh, definition object, but everyone else who's just a regular uh, JavaScript developer, they get all the benefits of not having to write all that code. And like everything, there's some stuff that they don't want to tell you. Again, with JavaScript libraries, it seems that uh, any kind of interface or UI is a tough thing. So Angular doesn't bring your own, uh, Angular you have to bring your own UI. Um, not a bad thing again, but it's something that you have to consider. NG repeat can kind of uh, can kind of come back and bite you. So what it'll actually do is render out. If you have a list of a thousand items, it'll actually render out a thousand different DOM elements. And if you have a thousand of a uh, thousand elements inside your DOM, it's just going to crash and be uh, not going to be fun. And as I quickly just showed with uh, directives. There's a huge learning curve. Um, that was really a simplified example. If you want to look at like, what some other people are doing, um, they can get very complex, very crazy, very fast. <laughs> but with all this, we think that there's some, uh, there's some benefits to using these two uh, frameworks together. So we can use Cordova to create cross-platform uh, mobile apps. We can use Angular to create, to structure these web apps. Um, Cordova doesn't come with a JavaScript framework, but we can use Angular for that. And coincidentally, they are both started around the same time. But at the same time, there's still stuff that we're missing. Uh, we can use Angular and Cordova on a day-to-day -day basis, and we're still not going to have the full stack that you know a native SDK has. We have a web view, we have some code structure, but we don't have uh, navigation stacks, we don't have those gestures. Things, again, that I said, Xcode gives you that. Even uh, Android Studio, they'll set all that stuff up for you, import the right things. You don't have to worry about that. Who wants to really rewrite UI kit? No one. So, we need this. We need, essentially, an SDK for the web that provides you know, all the rich uh, UI components, all the gestures, um, APIs that we can use to interact with these components. And that's, that's where Ionic comes in. 
we think it's pretty great if you guys if you guys have heard of it. So the focus is really on you should be building your app, not the underlying stuff that's uh, that's used to control your app. And if you've never done uh, native development before, but you've always written uh, web pages, congratulations, you are now a native developer. Because all this stuff is essentially, at the end of the day, HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And we are taking advantage of Angular because it provides all these things for us out of the box. Those directives are great for just creating these reusable components. Um, and it's been proven to work on, des uh, on desktops and building large scale application. Um, we're using something called SAS. Uh, this is a developer conference. If you guys have ever touched SAS before, or CSS in general, have you guys? Show of answers. Awesome. So we'll use SAS to generate all of our CSS, which allows you to actually intercept it and start over uh, redefining our variables using all the mix-ins that we have already written. So that way you can go ahead and change one variable uh, in the file and get a totally different looking app and something that's going to be unique to whatever you're building. You know, we don't want people to go out and deploy an app that looks like it was made with Ionic, but, in, but people to actually deploy an Ionic app that fits with the brand. And we're gonna start tweaking uh, the UI a little bit uh, here and there. So in this example, this is what we call platform continuity, uh, where we're just gonna start following some of the native, uh, native guidelines that each platform has. So iOS, center title, tabs at the bottom. Android, titles, to the left, tabs on top, and they're gonna have the order to highlight what's the active tab. Um, little things that you know you can configure if you really want to. But again, it's stuff that you know it's already done for you out of the box. You don't have to worry about it. So how's it all really come together? Well, you have your app, you have Ionic being the UI layer, Angular being the um, structure for it, that's gonna get wrapped inside of a web view, uh, so Cordova, and deployed to your device. So, actually we'll go back real quick. So we'll actually start it real quick. I'm just gonna start. Uh, I'm gonna be risky hope that this actually works. The Wi-Fi has been pretty reliable, but now that I'm giving a talk, it's gonna totally crap out on me. Cool, so I just essentially made an app. And I'm gonna go into that directory. And then I'm just gonna kick up a server. Um, And here we go. Um, I essentially have that same app that I was highlighting for that's modeled after iOS and for Android. So I can come over here, go to Android, get all the animations, get some, tog some toggles that look nice and material design like, come over to and uh, iOS, get their nice toggles, get those same animations, get the actual title to become the title for the back button. So all this nice stuff out of the box and I don't have to worry about it. So some of the structures that we actually provide are stuff that you uh, that's really common in all mobile apps. So we provide some side menus um, which we can, I just wanted to highlight the actual code that, you know, use, that's used to make the side menus. It's all this nice, clean uh, looking code. You know where everything is. If I even took out the comments, you know where all this stuff is going to be because it's nice and declarative. You know where it all is. If you want to get a little bit more complex, like that example I uh, had up, we have tabs. Uh, so that way we can have each individual tab being its own navigation stack. 
And if you go to tab one, view two, go to tab two, navigate around a little bit, and then go back to tab one, you're still going to be where you, uh, where you were when you uh, left it. <clears throat> and then this is kind of like one of the big ones that we're super proud of. Um, earlier when I said that ng repeat can kind of bite you, well, collection repeat is our answer to that. So it's modeled off of uh, the UI collection view that iOS has. Where we're just going to render all the items that are visible in the scroll view, and then one on top and one on bottom for padding. And as you scroll, we're just going to update the uh, update the data of each item, and so that way we can keep it as max 15 items in the scroll view, and those those are the only elements that are going to exist in there. And we can just update the data on the fly. And so this is an example of 3,000 items all in a scroll view on a phone, scrolling super smooth. And this, this is the kind of thing that wouldn't be possible with ng repeat. And again, this can be just a drop-in replacement. Uh, if you notice the code, I'm just doing you know, collection repeat instead of ng repeat, and I'm just binding to the name. And then one of my favorite ones, uh, pull to refresh. You notice that it's just a component now. Uh, we're not doing, you're not gonna go ahead and write some code saying, well, if the scroll, if they pull down like 10%, snap it back. No, it's just gonna be, give me the ion refresher component. I'm gonna have a method, I'm gonna, you know, on your pull down, I'm just gonna go out and fetch some more data, however that is done. And I'm just gonna uh, push that back to the uh, stack of items I have. But there's more to Ionic than just the components, and that's something that we are really pushing. Um, I showed quickly the um, package that we, the CLI tool that we just had. Um, so if you go out to npm install uh, Ionic and Cordova, make them global packages, you can go out and you can actually start scaffolding out projects like I just did, where it's a simple command, and I already have a tabs application, similar to how Native does it. Um, we can start getting some development tools right out of the box, such as Live Reload, Gulp, uh, Bower, if you're going to use them. And we can actually just have that live re have a Live Reload server, so that way when you're developing locally on your machine, it'll keep everything up to date. If you actually want to compile it and throw it onto your device, you can still use that same Live Reload server. And then you can actually just have simple commands of just, give me a native binary. Um, at the end of the day, that's what we want, so why don't we just make that simpler, too? Um, with that CLI, we're also able to start doing some more complex stuff without you ever having to uh, deal with the, you know, all the details. So for older Android, which doesn't matter what you're doing, native or web, it's a pain. Uh, anything up until Android 4.4 at least. Um, so we can actually go ahead and just start bundling a modern uh, web view with it and bypass the system uh, web view. We can use Chromium. So that way, you know, you run a simple command, Ionic browser add crosswalk, which is the project that uh, is using, that it's using. It'll go through and actually run through all the commands to get the actual uh, web view and integrate it into your project without you ever having to touch uh, anything, any Java or JARs. And you can have old uh, hardware, but still get amazing performance because it's utilizing this new uh, web view. Um, if you're used to working with Cordova and Angular, you know that it could be kind of a pain to integrate some of these native plugins. Well, we have a project called ng Cordova where you can start working with some of these native, um, these native plugins in a nice Angular friendly syntax. Everything's all promise based instead of using callbacks. Um, and so again, it's just something, you know, it just, your life is much easier when you start using this. And something that we're, uh, that we're starting to implement now is our IO services. First one in particular is our push notification services. 
So handling push notifications on you know, native or uh, hybrid has always been a pain. So we've actually gone out, built the server, built everything uh, to handle all the messages, uh, and built the implementation so that way you just reference the file, pass in uh, some device, uh, pass in your tokens, and it's all set for you. You don't have to worry about anything else. Other services that we're working on um, are our analytics uh, service. You know, who's gonna be able to you know, analyze your UI better than the people who make the UI? So we can start doing things like heat maps, um, getting you know, stats on, you know, are people actually pre going to this feature of my app um, more than you know, this other one I, I implemented a few weeks ago? Okay, no they're not, I can rip that out. And you know, if you wanna rip that feature out, we actually have our live update. So we can actually bypass um, mobile app stores and just give them, give people the new code so we can just update the HTML, the JavaScript, and CSS you know, as you need it without them having to go ahead and re-download your application. Uh, and then we have A-B testing, and then actually services to go out and uh, pack your app if you don't feel like downloading the native SDKs for Android or iOS, because Xcode is a six gig download right off the bat, and Android's even worse. You only have 128 gig hard drive, just get rid of that, just send it to the server, let it build for you. It's a no-brainer. And along that same line, well, what if people are, you know, haven't paid that Apple that $99 or don't have an Android device? Well, they still want to test their apps. So we have a free service called uh, Ionic View, which allows you to download an app onto your actual uh, device that you want to test on. You can upload your project that you've been working on on your machine, upload it to the view servers. Um, it'll download that to your device and you can just start demoing your um, app right on your phone. So it's a little bit of an inception-like state, or uh, inception-like where it's an Ionic app loading another Ionic app. So it's kind of crazy, but you know, you have, still have access to all these uh, native plugins. So if you want to do something with your camera from your app within an app, it'll work. And then if you want to get, you know, some prototyping done, just start getting some ideas, hashing them out before you actually touch code. Uh, we have this creator service where it's essentially just a wireframe, uh, drag and drop builder. Um, anything, the company behind Ionic Drifty, that was what they were doing before Ionic. So this is kind of going back to our roots of being an interface builder. So you can come in here, um, decide, okay, well, is it side menu's gonna work for me? or do I really wanna use tabs, or I just wanna do you know, single uh, view hierarchy. All right, well I'm gonna do tabs, cool. And then you can hit an export, get the code that you uh, wanna use, and start integrating that with your project. And it'll actually give you a uh, small code, so you could go to the CLI, actually start a project with that code, and just download all uh, your, your wireframe from there and not have to like copy, paste, it'll take care of that for you. And the most important thing is our community. It's a very active community right now with like local user groups in all these different uh, countries, uh, France, uh, Japan even, I think, has one, which is crazy. Uh, Spain, Brazil, uh, we have an incredibly active forum you know, and part of my time is to hang out on that forum and just answer people's questions. So if you've been on the forum before, you've probably talked to me maybe once. Um, we have an incredibly active IRC channel, which is still is crazy to me because IRC is such a data technology, but everyone uses it. We have over like 100 people in that cha uh, chat room on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and our GitHub at, uh, repo is incredibly active. It's like the 40th most po uh, popular JavaScript framework or on GitHub, so it's pretty crazy. <laughs> and if none of that sold you, we have icons. We have icons galore. We have icons for your iOS app. 
We have icons for your Android app, and then we have a platform agnostic uh, icon set. Over 700 of them, and fun fact about them, they're actually getting more popular than the uh, framework. They're actually used a lot more than the actual code base, which is just crazy to me. So here will be the actual demo, and if anything will fail, this is where we'll be failing. Screen recording. I could never figure out a good way to actually uh, record, uh, stream my device, but have it be reliable. So we're going to see if QuickTime will actually work. If not, we can just use um, we can just use a simulator. Uh, it won't work. Uh, I didn't do my sacrifice to the demo gods. It's my fault. Oh, that's a microphone. That's why. What? Aha. So just a little bit of a scramble right there. Oh, that's my face. That's cool. Cool. And I think I can just turn off the mic on my computer because that's probably going to give some feedback. Maybe I don't know. He'll he'll yell at me if he does. <laughs> so this is just a simple app. Uh, this is a Philly ETE app, if you guys have been using it. It's pretty cool. Um, native. I met the guy who built it last night. Super awesome guy. Um, we can start filtering if we really want to. If I, if I want to make sure that I didn't miss that Bluetooth energy, low energy uh, session, which I accidentally missed. Oh well. I hope Don's not mad. Uh, I can go back and cancel that. So that's a native app. You saw the things. You saw the swipe to go back. You saw everything updating. You saw how smooth it was scrolling. Uh, you got the side menus. So we'll go back and we'll go over here to my terminal and So I took up the challenge of rebuilding the entire Philly ETE app using Ionic. Uh, begged the people for the data. They were kind enough to get it for me. I owe, I owe Ken a beer um, or scotch. Um, so we can see we actually are just pulling, again, it's going to pull in the same concept I've been talking about. We're pulling in some JSON data. It actually went out. Uh, the CLI actually went out and built it, built it for our device. <laughs> and this is this is my Philly ETE app. There's some good scrolling. Uh, if I want to see, it's not an exact clone. I couldn't do an exact clone. I didn't have the time. Uh, but if I want to see some information about each of the speakers, well, I can get all the information. So I have to go back to go to the actual track, figure out what information, uh, what kind of track is this going to be about, uh, where is it actually going to take place and when, a um, little brief information. Come over here to my track, <clears throat> and this will be the really cool part. So. You guys saw that I took a picture earlier. Well, we're going to come over here, and we're going to take a picture again right now. So give me your, your best kind of like, yeah, ionic face right now. Cool. Awesome. Take a picture. Da, 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 da. Post to Twitter. So what actually was I doing? Um, and that was just one view on the entire app. There's still, you know, I can go back. I can still get all the information on all the, all the presenters. 
blame the Wi-Fi for images not downloading, not me. <clears throat> this is a really, really fun one. We're hooking into Google Maps. Uh, if we get a location, thank you Wi-Fi. We can, you know, we get full Google Map support. We can zoom back in, and if I want to figure out where I'm getting, uh, can a drink tonight? Oh, this Wi-Fi is killing me. Let's see if I can turn off that. How well that'll work. Awesome. So now I get a little list of, you know, all the bars around here. Uh, get the fire, uh, Union Transfer. All these local bars, I don't know where they are or if they're good or not. <clears throat> and if I really want to find some information about the venue, I can go ahead. I have this page over here. If I wanted to call them right now, I could. That'd be really weird. Uh, and I can see some nice pictures, you know, what's the venue actually look like on the inside. And, you know, get scrolling. And then we can go back here. Um, my search still left off, so I can figure out what time I'm actually speaking at, because I have been forgetting it all, all week. So all of that, that's a lot to take in. Uh, we'll cancel this, and let's open up Vim. Uh, no, I don't want to open up the Bower RC. Uh, and let's actually just look at some of the code. <coughs> so. This is really all the code that I'm using to go out and fetch that data. Um, I had to keep it locally just for uh, internet reasons, just to be safe. Um, but you can see, this is incredibly similar to what I showed you during these slides. I haven't done anything overly complex. I'm not going out and you know, trying to create this grandiose idea of an app. This is really, you know, if you're trying to build like, you know, a simple conference app, Oh yeah, Ionic will do it, no problem. I just proved it. Um, I'm going out here, I'm gonna go get all the sessions. If I really want to be better, I could have saved that response into a variable and just started calling it again um, from each one of these uh, functions. But I didn't, because I was crazy like that. <laughs> we'll go back over to our controllers where really all the, the meat of the app is actually going to exist. Um, I have all the data that I'm loading. Uh, I actually built this out and was trying to call it over uh, the wire. So I had to show a little loading, but if you notice, it was so fast loading the actual data from uh, memory, I didn't have to worry about that. So this could probably be deleted. But we're actually gonna go ahead and actually just start calling those services. Uh, the factory that I just created, that I showed you, same exact method that I did in my slide, and I still get all this functionality. If I wanted to come up here, you see I got a little clear search uh, function. Go back over to QuickTime. So I'm here searching. Well, I got this little, this little button right here. Okay, I can just go ahead and start transitioning back. And you know, I'm filtering through that whole entire list, which is all given to you uh, in Angular, and getting all these smooth scrolling with Ionic. It's great. And just to show a quick, you know, example, and don't worry about trying to memorize all this. Uh, it's all up on GitHub. I'll give you guys the link at the end. So that way you actually have to stay through the talk. So we'll look at the sessions. This one's a little bit more complicated because I made it that way. Um, but we have just a simple little form which we're gonna say, hey, here's our input. We're just gonna go ahead and start, you know, working uh, with forms in the, inside this area. This is fine. Um, I have some error handling here if I, if I can't load the actual data for some reason. Um, so I can attempt to load it again. And then here's the main list of it. So I have a list. I'm just gonna repeat over each one of those um, session objects in the sessions array. I want to filter it later on uh, using that search box. So I'm going to give it a parameter search by, and this is actually going to text uh, go back to the value of the input. So whatever the value of the input is, we're just going to start eliminating everything in that list 
if it doesn't equal that. And then if I, then I needed to, you know, figure out, well, it's cool that I have all this list, but I have no idea which one comes first. So we can actually pass in an order by, uh, pipe it in, and say, well, we're just gonna start changing the order by this key value in those objects. And then from here, it's really simple uh, Angular. Um, we're just gonna start binding to what the session name is. Um, if there's multiple speakers for each session, let's just get all the speakers, uh, get their first name, and get their last name. Open up. And then we can come over here to the actual uh, detail page of that. I have that share button, which is gonna start calling those native plugins. Um, if we want to see all the raw JSON output, we can, we can just start piping that through uh, and print that out. But this is really just, you know, all this in here is just the Angular part. Let's actually look at uh, that controller to get some of the JavaScript part, part. Cool, so I said I had that uh, share method. Well, it's a function inside of my controller. We're gonna do, we're gonna get, create a message variable. If a person, if one of the speakers has a Twitter handle, uh, which they provided, we're gonna include them in the tweet. If they don't have it, we're just not gonna include their name. They missed out, Twitter's awesome. <clears throat> we're gonna take probably the best photo that you know the camera can take. We're gonna save it to the uh, camera gallery. And then we're gonna start calling in, uh, calling uh, the Cordova camera method. Now this is using ng Cordova, so that way we get this nice promise, uh, promise um way of uh, interacting with native plugins. So, I'm gonna call uh, get picture, which is gonna let me take it, and if it's successful, we're gonna pass that into the social sharing plugin. So that way I can uh, you know, pass in the message variable from earlier, the photo. I can log it out if it was successful. And if for some reason something went wrong, rut row, we're fine. And then we can handle any errors if the camera plugin actually failed. And then that's, that's really it. That was, this whole thing is not even. So 48, this is less than 50 lines of code for that and that's with comments. And I basically am hooking into all the device's native capabilities. It's a good day. So we'll go back to the Presentation. And I'd show you it on Android if I could actually get a decent screen share. Um, it's not as simple with iOS, but I will run it just to prove. So it's gonna take a little bit longer than iOS to actually build. The downside of Android, sigh. Just waiting now. Cool, so yeah, I can show it off later on if you guys really want. Um, but I actually love it because I have instructions in the README. If you guys go out and build it yourself, that way you get to play around with it and actually deploy it onto your own device because you don't need a provisioning profile for Android. That's actually what won me over. So yeah, you can see here, super smooth scrolling. I have that side menus again. Yeah. Again with all the scrolling and everything. I'm still being able to you know, filter through everything. So it's the same exact functionality. This looks like an Android uh, native app, not to a developer, to like a normal everyday person. People are actually gonna be using this app. They'll have no idea. So, uh, cool. 
we'll go back ahead. So we'll go back to the slides. So that's my demo. It, demo. It's up on GitHub. Uh, I'll give you guys the link afterwards to make you stay here and look at it and not download it right now. So this is really covering you know, the bare basics. You know, what can you do with Ionic and Angular and Cordova? Um, but if you want to go into more detail on some of, some of the things that I didn't have a chance to cover, I don't have eight hours. Uh, Christoph Konrats, he actually has an incredible Cordova tutorial up online uh, going through all these small details. And also, I want to add before you take the picture, the links are going to be in the uh, GitHub repo. <coughs> and if you really want to check out more on Angular, and if you have no idea anything about it, uh, Dan Wallin has a crazy popular video, 60-ish uh, 60 minute, 60 minutes of AngularJS. Uh, if you want to actually learn uh, some more in-depth uh, about Angular, Egghead.io has some really great videos uh, done by Mr. Wonderful Can See Dodds over here. Uh, we actually have an Ionic book. Um, that's written by us, not us. So, but it's bundled with, uh, Ion it's Ionic in action, and then it's bundled with Angular in action and Cordova in action. So you, if you want to read, you can. You can get all three of them and get it done uh, in one shot. And if you're actually starting to use this stuff and you have questions, um, you're not 100% sure how to do something or you get in errors but you don't know where the error is coming from, our forum, uh, like I said, 20%, you know, about 20% of my time is on that forum. That's where I uh, came up through the community before I started working with them. That's, you know, I love that forum. It's great. You're going to get an answer there, if not from me, from someone else, someone who, you know, can actually help you. It's an incredibly uh, productive place. So, we, there's been a lot of talk about Angular 2, and I even prefaced all the Angular sections saying things are going to change. Um, if you aren't aware, we'll just recap uh, NG Conf, the ng-conf. Uh, beginning of March, they announced uh, more details on Angular 2, um, specifically using TypeScript and a lot more uh, ES6. Um, there's a new template syntax. There's a new syntax for everything. If you want to start setting up bindings, it's not the same as it was. Everything's incredibly different. There's a new router somewhere in there. <clears throat> All in the name of this incredibly fast uh, and shiny new framework. They even made a new logo for it, which is even crazier. If you guys can see that. So this is how we feel right now. Pretty productive, pretty awesome. A little bit, bit of a badass. What was it gonna be like with Angular 2? And we've already started writing you know, some Angular 2 code, so you know how it feels. A little bit like the Hulkbuster. So, <coughs> We think it's going to be great. Uh, we think it's going to be incredibly powerful for us um, as people who work with Angular and not um, on Angular. And all those benefits are going to translate to people as develop, uh, you guys as developers. So again, I'm Mike Hardington, uh, at mhardington on Twitter. Uh, tweet at me if you have any questions. You guys all get prizes today. You get stickers and a t-shirt. So, conference swag. <clears throat> um, GitHub repo, uh, github.com slash mhardington slash philly ete. Super hard to, uh, you know, to remember. If you guys just want to take a picture of that right now, go right ahead. Um, but I'll tweet out the link uh, later words uh, after this. So, incentive to follow me. <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, if you guys have any questions, I'd love to take them right now. Yeah. It looked like you made a you made a, an Ionic app um, that wasn't really targeted for the web, but it was you know using Angular and like web stuff. Yep. Uh, if you have just like a web app that's using Angular, is it how would so, you would so you could you it? deploy an Ionic app as a web app? Well, would you just sort of like 
tag all your it's like tag your like what do you recommend just sort of tagging your your website uh code with uh ionic tags and then sort of try and go for it so how would you get taken a pre-existing angular app and start working with ionic yeah so yeah um if you want to actually transfer stuff that's already uh using angular and specifically using a ui router in uh, as well um, you can start going ahead and uh, rewriting some of your temp uh, all your templates because they're going to be they're going to change to fit uh, a mobile perspective. Um, from there, you may have to do some work inside of your controllers, but the bulk of your logic should be outside of controllers anyway and isolated to directives. So that shouldn't be too much of work. Um, all your fact all your factories and services where you're getting uh, and fetching data that'll be able to translate no problem. So. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Awesome. Any other questions? Yes. Get the mic. Is it possible to mix and match? Um, for example, like in order to have an app, I mean, can I have the native app and include some modularity with Ionic? Um, you can. It's not on uh, the Ionic side. It's something that you have would have to do with Cordova. So Cordova will actually, instead of being the entire uh, view of your app, Cordova will allow you to embed a little bit of itself inside a native app. Um, it's on their documentations under Cleaver. Um, so that would allow, that would, you know, you would have to go ahead and uh, read through that uh, and set all that up. But at, the end, but at the end of it, you get still have a www folder where you can use all your, um, all your code from there. Um, in fact, last job, didn't they did an entire mobile app natively, um, and then I went in and did a lot of the documentation, uh, instructions, and FAQ sections, all inside of an uh, with an Angular uh, with Angular and Ionic. So you can do it. Cool. Thank you. Cool. Any other questions? Like, how do you play catch up with like all? Uh, uh, iOS, Android, and then what's your plan around Angular 2? So how do we play catch up with iOS? Yeah, um, so I think a great way to highlight is you know going from iOS 6 to iOS 7. That would completely broke everything um, for native developers. You had to redesign all your apps. Well, since we're really just doing web view, uh, a web view, CSS, you know, it's a couple lines, take out the gradients, make everything a flat single color, that's fine. As far as dealing with different versions of hardware, uh, like Android like 4.1, 4.2, and 4.3. Yeah, like you showed like the camera thing. Yeah. You were basically using the native abilities of a... Yeah, that's all abstracted away through Cordova's plugins. So all the code that was called to um, call the camera functionality, behind the scenes, it's actually calling separate, you know, for the iOS implementation, it's calling the iOS, the Objective-C code. For Android, it's gonna call uh, off the Java code. But it's abstracted out through uh, this bridge that Cordova has. So wait, I'm just calling it through JavaScript, and then everything else will get taken care of for me. I don't have to worry about the difference. It's all already, you know, again, abstracted away from me. Is that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. And how about Android too? And are you going to support Angular 2? When are we going to go to Angular 2? When there's Angular 2 actually to go to. Uh, right now it's... <laughs> it's like, like their plan is to go, I, mean, I think June or July? That's yeah. That's the plan, I um, to release like production work. That's the problem with dates. Once you actually start uh, saying a date, you have to, you know, people start holding you to it. And if you miss it, you know, they can, uh, they can, bust you for it. So I can't put a, an actual date on when, I, when we'll release it. Um, we're working closely with the Angular team, so we're hoping to release Angular, uh, Ionic 2 with Angular 2 around the same time. Um, but until we actually have stable Angular 2 code to work with, we, I can't say for sure. But most likely not within the next six months. 
Um, down in the weeds, are you guys using WK WebView and uh, has that transition taken place? Is it better in performance? No, we are not using WK WebView. Um, <clears throat> for anyone who doesn't know, WK WebView was the replacement WebView for iOS, uh, for U, uh, UI WebView. Uh, it came with a lot more promises of a lot more perf uh, better performance for JavaScript uh, execution. Uh, scroll events, which are you know, a rare thing to get in any web uh, website or web view. Um, it's broken right now. I think there was a patch put in, but it hasn't made its way out as a public release. So Apple may have fixed it, but they're just gonna not give it to any of us. But there's also other uh, things broken inside of it besides, um, besides the obvious stuff. So the first main issue is that it can't load uh, files uh, using like a file relative protocol, so I can't be on index.html and make calls to uh, make it load page one.html. I would have to actually start a mini server uh, using uh, in object with Objective C to actually make that call and actually pipe it through an actual like actual server, um, which UI WebView allowed you to do. So that issue I think has been fixed. Um, everything else. Uh, doesn't support cookies. Uh, there's a whole entire uh, troll account for uh, WK uh, WebView. Cool. So this is actually really fun to uh, to point out. It's just a troll account, but. Um, Nope, he doesn't support app cache. Um, I don't support, uh, support uh, self-signed certificates. No, I can't manage cookies. So yeah, it's a little bit of a bug right now. Um, there are some plugins that go around to patch it, but they can't patch some of that stuff, so we're not, Cordova doesn't use it internally, so we don't worry about it. Okay, thanks. Cool, any other questions? Uh, just a quick question. Do you support Android home screen widgets? And if not, will you, do you plan on it? Home screen widget. Yes. Uh, so that would be something that would get handled by a Cordova plugin. Um, I don't know of any uh, home screen widget plugin um, at the moment. We, along the same lines, because I know it will be asked at some point, it's the new hype, there are some wearables plugins that we are looking into and figuring out how can we adapt UI to that or how can we work with that. <clears throat> so, not sure about the, uh, the home screen widgets, but I can give you, you know, some other information saying, hey, we could support uh, wearables down the line. We just gotta look into it. So if that makes, if that makes it uh, better, that I can't give you an answer. That's fine. Okay. Any other questions? I think I got like two minutes left. Any other questions? Or you guys just want to get your shirts and stickers? That's cool. That's all right. So we're just going to close this out. Ah, oh, no. Awesome, and with that, thank you for coming, guys.